Okay, so to finish off the cross section edits to the real road, um, I'm going to apply uh, super elevation. Now, there are a, a few different methods in the software to apply um, super elevation. Uh, if I want to apply using OS roads, then um, you will use this compute apply super elevation command. Um, if I'm using uh, a New South Wales method, um, then I'd apply using super tables. Um, so uh, look, I'm going to uh, take the uh, Osroads approach and uh, automatically apply the super elevation using this super elevation command. So all I do is I run the super elevation command, uh, pick on the road and this dialog box appears. I'm basically just filling out the, the dialog as per uh, reviewing the Osroads table. So I set up things like the normal cross for the terrain, the number of lanes. Uh, the design speed uh, for this road will be 80 kilometers an hour. I then set the maximum super that I would apply uh, on any curve and I might set that to uh, we'll go 7%. If I don't have spiral curves and on this alignment I don't, uh, then I need to tell the software uh, how the super develops, uh, how much super elevation happens before we get to the curve and how much super elevation develops uh, inside the curve and I've just got that set to 50-50 here. I then tell the software what codes will rotate, uh, LEB and REB are my rotation codes but I also want the shoulder to rotate so I'm going to type in LSH and RSH for that. My shoulder is set at a minus 5% cross fall at the moment and I want it to rotate uh, up to match the uh, rotation of the uh, LEB and REB. So we have a file that you, you specify um, in order to set how the shoulder will rotate in relation to the, the edge bitumen. So um, I'm going to use shoulder matching pavement cross falls so the shoulder will rotate up to match the uh, LEB and REB uh, which is what we want. When the software calculates, calculates the development points, uh, I can round them up to the nearest metre. And the last thing I do is, is pick the standard I want to use. So we have Osros 210 absolute minimum. I have Osros 210 uh, desirable as well. So uh, I might pick the absolute minimum. And then I hit update, apply to calculate uh, that. This form will appear. It's just a warning because you, you can override the super elevation in the tables. Um, and if you rerun the calculation, then you will lose um, any data that you've, you've edited. So I'm going to say, yes, that's fine. And then I head over to the applied super elevation tab. So this table lists... Uh, the super, ele uh, super elevation development for the entire road. The first thing I do is look at this curve column because I can see that I've got curve 1, curve 2, curve 3 and curve 4 as part of the alignment. The software looks at the radius of each curve and reports uh, it here. So I can see that curve 1 has a 1650 radius, it's a right hand curve and I can, can see the radius for each of those. Now uh, uh, for curve 1, given the size of the radius curve, it hasn't applied any super elevation. I can see that minus 3% uh, is the cross fall through the curve at the, the, the TP, etc. Um, when we get into curve 2, um, uh, it still doesn't have any uh, super elevation, but then we get to curve 3. Because it's only a 195 metre curve, the software's pushed it up to um, 7%. Um, and, and just to point out, we can see how the development occurs um, through the, the, the changes here. Uh, and then we can see the, the super elevation applied at curve 4, uh, also up at, at 7%. Now, if uh, I had an, uh, an, an issue with the uh, uh, calculations here, the software would report an error in the comments, basically saying that uh, you need to increase the radius, perhaps. And uh, there are a couple of ways to resolve that issue. I mean, I could go back to the alignment and edit the uh, 
radius of the curve. If uh, I couldn't resolve it that way, uh, I could select on Edit Selected Curve and we could recompute that, that curve at a different design speed. Maybe I change the, the max super uh, elevation on that curve uh, and then the software would recalculate it. What I might do is let's just recalculate at 6% maximum. And you can see that I actually get an error now on curve 4, and I think maybe, yeah, only curve 4. So it says that the radius is too small. If, if I hover over, it says that the minimum radius should be 157. Look, it's only 2 metres difference, so it doesn't really matter too much. Um, but I can see that that's the error you would get. Um, and then, look, if I wanted to recompute that at, say, we'll recompute at, say, 60, just that curve and apply and then you know, the software is happy with that at 6%. So um, any of these values here you can edit. I can change uh, the cross falls, the, the changes, um, and completely control how the super elevation develops from this uh, dialog box. I'm going to select on apply exit and if I open up a cross section window say on this curve we should see full super at 6% and by changing the cross sections we can see how the super elevation develops as we uh, go around that curve and then come out of it. Software will resolve overlapping super elevations so it will uh, resolve uh, and you can see at this point we have uh, a curve leading into another curve so uh, there's a good chance the super elevation overlaps but the software will resolve that for you you'll just need to review uh, the, de the development points through the, through that area so that's it we have uh, super elevation now applied to the road